Okay, so I'm with Marcus Mathis. That's true, Mathis, yes. And I guess uh, we spoke two years ago about the GH2, and right. that time I was working with the GH1. Uh, but this time we're talking about the GH3. Um, so, Marcus, I got a couple questions for you. Please. Uh, I guess in the viewfinder, like what kinds of improvements have you seen in the viewfinder of the GH3 over the GH2? Yeah. Well, we choose to use the OLED viewfinder, which is newly incorporated. The resolution has been up by a little bit. It means like 1.5 to 1.7 million dots. That's the one thing. Okay, more resolution, but I think resolution was is not all. So the main reason for having the OLED is the uh, reaction time, the time lag to show the next picture, which is also important for video or for um, panning around. Right. And therefore, this is one of the improvements. And the second one is the contrast. The contrast ratio can go up. Uh, this time, it will be uh, by 10,000 to 1, which is much higher than our former models. What was uh, what was the previous contrast ratio on the GH3, the GH2, sorry, do you remember? Something like below 500 to 1. So it's okay, so it's really a big, big contrast in contrast up, so to say. Yeah. Uh, I guess for video users or people who want to use manual focus lenses, uh, focus peaking, is that, has that been included in the camera? No, unfortunately, this time not. Uh, currently, um, we don't know if we can include via update or something, but um, unfortunately, at this stage, no. Uh, fair enough. I guess there Oh yeah, audio in. Like, is it finally a normal, like normal 3.5 millimeter jack in? Or yeah, that, a... that's correct. We have had some improvements regarding the uh, um, in ingoing things. Means, like, on the one hand, we have the headphone jack, which is completely new. It's 3.5. But as you are already saying, the microphone in was beforehand was 2.5. Now we are going for 3.5. So uh, quite normal, so to say. But improvements which have been requested. Uh, were a lot. Uh, one of the things was the battery grip, for example, which we also included. But one of them was also to have it in 3.5 and headphone in. Cool. Uh, I guess on the mention of the battery grip too, like we might as well just take a quick look at it. I see it's not just a grip, but it has quite a few. Okay, so it's got even like ISO lots of buttons. yeah, lots of new new buttons. You will see the same thing that is actually on the camera. It means wheels. We have more wheels included. One is here. One is over here. And the last one is already on that area. Right. So this kind of nearly has been taken over to the battery grip as well. So you don't only have the release, but you have the wheels. Okay. You have some buttons as well. I guess those wheels, do they still click or are they are they now fixed? Uh... Turning. Now now that we have so many wheels, we, <laughs> we are not with the clicking okay. <laughs> with this camera. Okay. Um, I guess, I guess one of my last questions, I'm trying to remember what my other question was going to be, uh, for sizing. Like I'm noticing it is, like it's still small, but it's uh, it's quite a bit larger now than the GH2. Uh, is this like a response to you know, customers wanting a bigger camera, or did you just need to make it now bigger for so many other features, or what's going on? No, that's, that's mainly the reason. We had to include more, we had to make more manual uh, possibilities with the camera, and uh, what we did not mention yet, but um, which fits to the connections also, we have the flash for studio light, um, so the sync. Um, so we had to somehow make it bigger. On the other hand, we had requests, as we already said, about the battery grip, to include the battery grip. And that means it, the size of the camera, obviously, it, this is our flagship model. It does not matter for its purpose. And on the other hand, for the ones that are looking for the smaller cameras, we still have, of course, solutions for the G5 or G3 or GF, GX type. So I guess and uh, will there be a GH3 like light edition or a kind of a smaller version of this in case that we could do away with a couple of the features but still want to keep like the, the wider dynamic range sensor and like you know like the headphone jack and the you know and then the, like a 3.5 millimeter audio in or is this it like we need like you know like we settle on this form factor and 
and we get a GS3. Is that what happens? Or? Well, what we usually, it, it will not be a GH3S for small or something. Okay. Um, but we are always trying to put some of the advantages of the top model, of course, also, uh, let's say, in the next generation of the G, for example, uh, to include some of it. For example, we had within GH2, we had the 50p video possibility included in some of our new cameras. So some will, will be taken over, but there's no G3, GH3 light planned. Actually, uh, on the mention too of uh, frame rates, then um, is there? I guess you know some of the Sony cameras can do like 1080p and 60 frames a second. Uh, what um, what kind of frame rates can we see at what kinds of resolutions with the GH2 or with the GH3? Well, uh, on the one hand, in, in Germany, of course, 50p is the more convenient one, 60p more for, for US and Japan, I guess. Um, but uh, we have 25p, we have 50p, uh, 50 progressive for the AVCHD standard. On the other hand, we have the possibility now to film with uh, the MOF, which means uh, the MOF container. Um, this is just the container, but the important thing about it is uh, on the uh, on the all I means all frames were completely taken we get to a data rate of 72 megabit per second which means the nearly the, the uh, uncompressed picture is going to the to the SD card or if you want to of course via HDMI you can also uh, get this kind so of 72 megabit per second now to a card yes okay and then 420 color space limitation still or? yes okay. yes no 422 unfortunately okay no fair enough um, but then I guess it back to the topic then of the iframe thing too. Then. So we're basically talking about like ABC intra. Yes, intra intra frames. Uh, okay. that, that's true, and that's, as I said, um, done into the MOF container, so um, as an advantage to the former uh, code and for uh, editing as well, I think many people would like that. Of course, we also have IPB, um, but it's 50 um, megabit per second. Still much more than before because we had, like, uh, in the beginning 17 megabit per second, then 28 megabit per second, and now we are at top level, let's say, 72 megabit per second should be enough for some reason. <laughs> Sounds good. I guess uh, uh, unofficially with the hack before, I don't think I ever went beyond 44 myself. So that sounds really good. What kind of hack? Uh, yes, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, actually, you know, if you don't mind, one one last question too. Like, it's going to be a lens question. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, with a 12 to 35 millimeter 2.8 and 35 to 100 2.8, um, is there perhaps an upcoming wide angle 2.8? Zoom by any chance? Um, of course, we are trying to aim for new lenses, and I think we announced um, two more lenses on the on the let's say plan for the next years. But that was like 115 millimeters, 2.8, and uh, 40 something, 1.2, so very bright one. But there was no showing uh, wider with 2.8. I think still the, the 12, I think, is quite nice, 12.35 for white, and. Um, yeah, we have the 714, which is kind of very nice and high-end uh, for super wide shots. But that same lens with 2.8, I think, quite difficult. Great. Okay, fair enough. Marcus, thank you. Thank you.